so you just found this really cool house it's in a great location the price is absolutely perfect it's actually a little bit on the cheap side and you can't help but wonder what's wrong with the property it's not just the property you have to be concerned with it's also what's around the property that's very important whatever you do when it comes to buying a cheap priced house do not be blinded by the price you see it's so important to check everything when it comes to buying a piece of real estate not just the price not just the house but the actual locations and all of its surroundings because literally it can affect your life in a very negative way my name is Wayne Turner and I've been doing everything when it comes to real estate for the last 30 years and I'm going to share with you really quick exactly what you can do to prevent a lot of headache a lot of heartache and most importantly a lot of lost money you see when you buy a property you have to look at the surroundings you have to not only just look at the neighbors but you also have to look at the community one way to do that is to simply go to Google Earth by going to Google Earth you can type in the property address once you type in the property address on Google Earth it will show you exactly what's in close and far proximity to that property so after you've pulled the property up on Google Earth, what you'll want to do next is look for anything that's remotely around that property, any manufacturing facilities, and drive the area. You have to know that you may be out looking at property on a weekend. However, it's quite quiet on the weekend. But if you're within close proximity, say a half a mile the way the crow flies through the woods that you never see from your property that you're looking to purchase that's priced amazingly well, but that's a manufacturing facility and it puts off an odor and it puts off a loud noise and it's going to be a hindrance to your life. And look, I know what you're probably thinking. You're probably thinking, yeah, man, a loud manufacturing plant with a riveting and welding. And what if it's smelling? And what if something's burning? And what is the odor? But it's not just the bad things. It's not just a bad odor. It's not just a loud noise. You see, it could be a facility that actually manufactures food. It could be a processing plant where they actually cook food every day for a fast food restaurant. And regardless of how much you like red beans and rice and jambalaya, that too will get old. Now it's also very important to know that if you're within a proximity of a fire hall, the fire station, they're gonna be loud when they fire up and roll out those trucks. And it's not just when it's a close proximity to your house. You have to ask yourself, are you going to be in the major thoroughfare, highway, or intersection where these fire trucks are gonna be consistently going on a daily, weekly basis? Now, one of the most important things that I always tell everyone to do, and I think it's just so overlooked, because so many people never do this. They never get out and literally just talk to the neighbors. It's okay to get out and talk to the neighbors. Knock on their door, introduce yourself, and let them know that you're really interested in purchasing the property. And why do you think the neighbors are selling their property? And how long have you lived in this neighborhood? And what do you like most about it? And are there any noises or nuisances that you could share? You see, not only can it affect your life when you buy a property and it's within close proximity to all these facilities, schools, churches, fire stations, manufacturing facilities, but other people that are going to buy your property are probably going to think the same thing. They're going to think, wait a minute, I don't know if I want to live next to that. And that's what I call a financial obsolence because it basically slows the value increase in your property. It's like anything. It's supply and demand. If there's less demand for your house, to be in your area because of loud noises or smells or anything like that, it's not gonna increase in value as fast. So what if you check all the boxes and you say, okay, this is perfect, I'm gonna live here, this is gonna be a great house, this is a good buy. Next, you gotta look at the property itself, the real estate itself. And there's a saying in real estate, if they can smell it, you can't sell it. You see, when you can walk into a house and you can smell the odor, the worse the smell, the harder the sale. But personally, when I go through a house, that actually is the opportunity to make some money. So here's what I mean by that. Most people, when they walk into a house, if they smell it and it smells horrendous, like cat urine and cigarette smell and you name it, if it smells really bad, most people don't know how to abate and get rid of that odor. And then you have to consider that people oftentimes don't know how to fix the property. They don't know how to get rid of the smell. And I tell folks, you have to do lots of things to get rid of the smell. And it's not just painting and replacing floors. You have to pull out ductwork every single time because everything gets tracked in the HVAC ductwork on the property. And then most most of the time people that are walking through to purchase a property where they're going to live in that property it's hard to get past the disgust even though they've gone through and they've had it cleaned and they've had it repaired and they've had everything painted it's still just a memory in their head of the disgustingness that they've seen 
before they bought the house. Now the good news when a house smells really, really bad is you're gonna have less people competing for the property. You're gonna have less people wanting that property because most people aren't aware of and how to actually get rid of any odor in the property. But as I'd mentioned, any property that you buy that has a definitive smell, whether it be mold, musky, mildewy, pet dander, cigarette smoke, anything like that, the best way is to clean the duct works. If you can, you need a HEPA type filter vacuum system cleaning the duct works. Worst case scenario, just replace the HVAC duct works in the house. So look, most importantly, when you find a house that you really like and it's checked a lot of the boxes, you wanna make sure you have what they call a due diligence period and they offer the purchase. It doesn't matter if the person even says, no, I'm selling it as is or if it's a bank owned property, you still reserve the right to have the property inspected typically within seven to 14 days. If you're not satisfied with the home inspection, you simply can cancel the contract and get your deposit back. So when it comes to doing a home inspection on your property, I always recommend just hire a third party home inspector. If you're not a licensed person, contractor, that's used to being around houses and working on homes all the time, just hire a third party contractor or a home inspector to come out and look at the property for you and give you a full synopsis on the home. So another thing you'll wanna have inspected is the home inspected for termites. Most of the time you can walk around the property and see if there's any kind of termite tunnels. You'll see the little brown tunnels and they'll start creeping up from the ground going into the house. Termites can do horrendous damage to a property and you never even see it. So even though you may see those, it's still best to just hire a pest inspection company to inspect the property. It'll cost about a hundred bucks and they'll tell you whether or not the home has termites. Now, if the house has termites or has had termites, it's not the end of the world. The very first house that I built, it had termites and after I lived there five years and sold the property. I was able to treat it. It cost about $700. The buyer still buy it. The house is still standing. Everything was good. So another thing that you need to look for when walking around the outside perimeter of the house, and you can do this in what they call the due diligence period after you make an offer to purchase of the property, or you can do it beforehand if you don't want to waste any time just walking around the outside perimeters of the property. You're looking for cracks in brick or stucco. Now, if it's a siding house, if it's a hardy board plank, vinyl siding, it's hard to recognize these. You'll have to go in the house and you'll have to look for cracks around windows and doors. Now, if you see cracks in the brick on the outside of the property, it's okay if it's a step crack, for example. In other words, the crack actually goes along the mortar between the bricks. It's when we see cracks in the brick, <clears throat> It's when we see cracks in the brick is when you need to be more concerned. Now, when you see cracks in the brick, it's not the end of the world. There's two reasons why you'll see cracks in a foundation on the property. One, you'll have a little bit of settlement. And if you can't physically feel the settlement where the floors have dipped and they're unlevel inside the house, you're probably okay. But one of the largest major factors of reasoning why you see settlements and movements in houses and on the corner of houses are these things called trees. You see, it's best to plant a tree at least 15 feet away from your foundation. What is a small tree when you plant it will grow to be a big tree one day. You see the root system in the trees, they love water and they're growing for water and they're also expanding out. And the roots in a tree system is just as tall and it's the tree itself. And so when they move towards your house, underneath those footings and that foundation, they absolutely will move it every single time. So even though the property says as is, and they're marketing the property as is, and oftentimes agents will put that out there on a property and it says as is, they're basically telling you that the seller's not gonna fix anything on the property. That doesn't mean that you have to buy the property. You reserve the right to do your due diligence. As I mentioned earlier, you can have the property inspected. And if you don't like what you see for that inspection, you can simply cancel the contract, and get your deposit back or you can move forward with the purchase of the property. Now, oftentimes you'll see foundations moving on a property, whether it's a slab or a crawl space, whether it has footings, you'll see a corner move and you're thinking to yourself, why is that corner moved? There's no trees around, it's just seen movement. Well, there's a thing when there's gutters on a home, right? It's called an elbow. So this is the downspout. The downspout sends the water down but if you don't have an elbow to direct that water away from your foundation, like this one has simply just fallen off, I'm sure recently, but you can see how ye, all this water, but you can see how all this water hitting that foundation over time can cause it to settle. 
So the video that I've been shooting is around this little property that's for sale and I'm going to take you inside and show you a couple other features that you need to be aware of. But this little house right here is a 1500 square foot, three bedroom, two bath house on an acre of land for $165,000 right here in Mandeville, Louisiana, which is just 35 minute drive from Metro New Orleans. So an older person has lived in this property. You can see by the decor, the curtains, the paneling and that sort of thing. But all in all, this property is in fantastic condition and it's the ideal property just as I've mentioned it's got a great price but like anything do your due diligence have it inspected have it looked at and most importantly don't forget about the well and the septic systems on a property you see the septic system on a property can have a massive effect on whether or not you're gonna spend five thousand dollars or you're gonna save five thousand dollars any property that you buy you want to make sure that the county the parish they come out they look at the system and they verify that it is working oftentimes when we go into properties like this one that is a bank owned foreclosed property for $165,000 that I mentioned they don't turn on the utilities they winterize the property basically they're putting a solution in the plumbing drains and they basically say it's as is where he is do your due diligence, have it inspected. It's your responsibility to turn on utilities and have all those things done. But at the end of the day, you can get a great buy on a house like this one. Now, houses go into foreclosures for all kinds of reasons, all kinds of hardships. But one thing you have to always look at, and I think a lot of people fail to do this, is if you're gonna buy a house as is where it is, it's okay to buy it as is where it is, but just have it inspected. And if you're gonna inspect it yourself, there's one thing that you must look at, you cannot ever forget to check the drains. That's right, you've gotta check the drains. You see, people get frustrated and aggravated and they take it out on the house, unfortunately. And they'll take that drain and they will literally pour concrete down the drain. Now, this house is raised, so it would be an easier fix. You simply crawl up underneath the house. But if this home were in a slab of concrete, you'd physically have to bust up the concrete to replace that drain. And of course, there's a simple way to test that. You simply just pour water down it and make sure it drains. So if you're looking to buy a property and get a good deal on the property and the price seems too good to be true, sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't. Just do your homework, do your due diligence, and most importantly, feel comfortable about your purchase and always listen to your gut.